Welcome to Tech Talks. Our DevOps edition today is focused on tech spotlight. Tech Talks is a series of short webinars that are deep dives for technical practitioners. We value you and want you to continue in your Splunk journey. Our experts help create these best practices, and we want you to leverage them in your daily role. Let's get started. I am Sahina Safari, a Principal Product Manager, and I am excited to share with you information about one of our most highly utilized features in Splunk APM called Tag Spotlight. And with me, I have my colleague Harnit Singh. Thanks, Sahina. I'm Harnit Singh, a Principal Observability Strategist, and I'll show you a demo of how Tag Spotlight can unlock invaluable insights for you. Thanks, Harnit. Today, we're going to talk about the cloud native journey and the troubleshooting challenges you may face as a result of that. Then, we're going to talk about the Tag Spotlight feature in Splunk APM. And after that, we're going to see it all work together in a demo. At the end of it all, we will cover additional resources available to you to take advantage of Tag Spotlight in Splunk APM. Our team will be available for Q&A throughout over the Q&A widget within your screen. And if you watch the recorded version of this webinar, please continue the conversation through the Tech Talk discussions in the Splunk community. Let's get started. The way we're seeing the market today is in four distinct stages. What we refer to as the cloud native journey or the shift to the cloud native architectures. And this may map well to your own internal digital transformation journey and associated applications. Now, from the bottom of this slide to the top, first you see a transformation in the infrastructure from data centers to public, private, and hybrid clouds. The next level up is about the change in the way applications are written and interacting with going to the microservices architectures. This is refactoring or development of new applications. And on the top layer, you see that there is a change in the delivery model to adopt to a DevOps model. Where do you place your organization? Well, the reality is that your organization probably has multiple applications that fall into different or multiple stages of this journey. There is no one size fits all here. Now, while all of these cloud-native technologies afford you tremendous flexibility and speed for your application initiatives. They come with a new set of operational challenges that you will need to address. Raise your hand if you have spent hours troubleshooting. Well, raise your virtual hand. I can't really see it, but I'm sure a lot of you have your hands raised. Why is this? Well, Let's see what complexities has been added to our new world. Complex interdependencies, tens or hundreds of loosely coupled components. Infrastructure is elastic and short-lived. Think about containers and serverless. And also, troubleshooting is a team sport, which is great, but it also adds more complexities. And complexity in troubleshooting means prolonged, failed, or slow customer interactions. And frankly, loss of productivity for the engineers involved in troubleshooting. The more time they spend troubleshooting, the less time they have to build innovative and robust applications. In troubleshooting, you need to understand the radius of impact and get to the root cause quickly. But in a complex environment, regardless of what step of the cloud journey you're on, you have a hard time answering questions like, I have a high error rate in my checkout service. Is a specific underlying host having problems? Which endpoint is failing? Or requests on my service come from all different API calls. How do I know which one is causing my service to fail? Or is the problem with my login service causing all my tenant levels to experience the same increase in latency? Traces can really help with this. Traces help you understand services and their dependencies. In fact, 
individual choices are great in finding the needle in the haystack. For example, how did the checkout service behave for this specific user who is complaining right now on Twitter? You can answer that with full fidelity of traces. But when you are experiencing issues with a service, the bottom-up approach of sifting through mountains of traces can be long and arduous. There needs to be a better top-down approach. Well, say hello to Tag Spotlight. Tag Spotlight allows you to see the root cause and the radius of impact for requests, error, and latency changes. In fact, it is your one-stop shop to see all your infrastructure, application, and business-related tasks all in one place. You can break down SLIs by individual tag values, and therefore you can correlate peaks in latency or errors with specific tag values. All sounds very magical, doesn't it? Well, how does this work? All the information you need is in the metadata of SPAN. This is the information that gets collected through instrumentation. In fact, this part is not really the secret sauce. We have auto instrumentation agents based on open telemetry, open standards that already collect a lot of this metadata. Now, there are some specific business or application related logic like tenant info or version of the code that might need a modification of instrumentation to add those custom tags. You can think of the tags collected in these rough four categories. You have your infrastructure tags, like host, Kubernetes cluster. You have your application level tags. Then you have your database tags. And then you get your business logic, for example, tenants or platform version. Now we get to the secret sauce. Using auto instrumentation agents or your own custom instrumentation or a combination of the two, you get a set of tags as metadata on your spans. But how can you see patterns and trends without looking at individual traces? For that, we use our proprietary methods of storing and querying traces to allow for full fidelity of traces while extracting patterns and trends. We use a mechanism called indexing tags as a way of indicating the tags and values we want to put in a special treatment category. How do we treat them? Well, we create what we call troubleshooting metric sets for the cross products of all of those index tags. That's basically how you can see the SLIs for the API service with the checkout endpoint narrowed down to only the instances on a specific Kubernetes cluster as experienced by silver level tenants only. Yes, you see SLIs broken down to this level of detail. Now, out of the box, we index important tags that we know matter to you, such as environment and endpoint. But we also put you in the driver's seat by giving you the power of adding other tags to that list. Okay, are you ready to see it all in action? Let me pass it to Harnit now, who is going to walk through how to troubleshoot using Task Spotlight. On to you, Harnit. Great, thanks so much, Sainaz. So now I'm going to walk you through a quick tour of the Splunk APM product. Now we've got a small e-commerce application made up of a few microservices with some obvious interdependencies. And what that means is the services with multiple endpoints are gonna make it really hard to try and keep a track of what could potentially be going wrong with my application. So let's try to make that easier. And to give you a quick orientation, on the right-hand side, we've got a service map that automatically gets generated when you instrument your applications with Splunk's open telemetry-based tracing agents. Oh, by the way, this map also updates every 10 seconds just to make sure that you're keeping up with the latest that's going on in your environment. And within the map, each circle represents a microservice or a third-party inferred service, which usually you're unable to instrument. So think of a third-party payment provider 
or a service like AWS S3. And each cylinder represents a database. On the left, you get to see the SLI of all of your microservices. So we refer to these as red metrics, total requests, errors, and duration of your requests. And this helps determine how well your microservice is behaving. So when you do have an issue, there are usually two ways to go about it. The first is a bottom-up approach. So say you've singled out a customer who is having a problem. How do you find them? So typically you want to add that customer's name or a unique user ID referring to that customer as metadata or a tag in your span. And because we offer full fidelity trace storage, you can actually find your needle in the haystack. Now, as an example, I have a user who is having problems logging in. So I select my service. I go look at all the traces coming from that service, pick a time frame, and then go pick the metadata key that I care about. In my case, it's user ID. Could be unique user ID. In my case, I ended up just using the exact username. And for me, that happens to be John Smith. So we go search for all traces that could have a key of user ID with the value John Smith. And because we store all, every single trace in the system, we're able to find that one unique transaction where John Smith was having a login problem. We see the waterfall view. We see that one span with the red asterisk indicating a 404 and an incorrect password being put in. So we can go reset the password and we're able to solve that one unique needle in the haystack problem that we were searching for. Fantastic. So what happens when multiple people start complaining? Let me zoom in on this really quick. So that's when aggregations at a higher abstraction become much more valuable and you need a top-down approach. So in my case, I go back to my service map to the troubleshooting view and people are complaining about my payment service. So I select the service, I see spikes in latency and I want to go explore. I jump into my tag spotlight view and here I'm presented with all of the index tags. And you can think of index tags as ones that are giving you some level of aggregate information. Now looking at every single unique user ID wouldn't make sense because the tags here really should be helping you understand the radius of impact. Now there are default tags that we include in our tag spotlight. So HTTP method, the endpoint, the status code, the kind and the operation, and the rest we encourage you and our best practices are to generate tags centered around four areas. Like Sainal's mentioned, they need to be around the infrastructure. So things like data center or node or VM, they can be application oriented. So things like thread ID, thread name, they can be database oriented, like a database name, database query, and you can have tags that are business logic oriented. So things like cart ID, product ID, tenant ID, and so on. And for our payment service, we can see spi some spikes in latency. So we can actually go look at the area that we care about and our index tags automatically refresh based on our time selection. So the next thing that, that we can do is we can only focus on the P99. So now I see a spike, a pretty massive spike on the pay endpoint. And I also see one particular data center that's behaving a little bit poorly. So just to confirm that, I can pin my data centers and then all my data centers show up on the top graph. And here again, we're corresponding our spike with US West 1. So let's go a little bit deeper and figure out exactly what's going on with US 1. So once we select the data center tag, that's where cross products come in. So now we're only focusing on US West 1, and we see that the status code is generally 200 across, so no issues in terms of uh, any kind of errors that people are experiencing. It's mostly been around latency. So there, there have been a couple of spikes that we see in the platform. And the next thing that I can do is I can quickly navigate and get an example trace of when latency was very high. So we can confirm exactly what's going on with that particular trace. 
we can see all the hops we can see one one massive jump uh, which is taking about six seconds and when we go expand into that further it's our third-party payment provider so if this keeps on occurring i can go inform my payment provider that they could potentially be in breach of their sla and very similarly i can pivot to a different service and quickly orient myself around how the overall service is behaving so if i reset the tag and then pivot my service to be caught for example then i get an understanding of what this service is doing overall right so i see a few set of database queries so it's handling database uh, queries it's dealing with a few endpoints it's also uh, relying on a jvm and we're able to see how each thread is behaving and whether one thread is overworked or overwhelmed we can go isolate that and try and see if we, we need to scale that and the other thing that it really tells me is my latency around get and set seems to be a little bit higher than delete and when i go look at requests and errors the number of requests that i'm getting for get and set seems to be uh, at least double or triple the number of keys that i'm getting so if i'm looking at possibly optimizing my database i probably want one which can handle gets and sets better uh, similarly if i was uh, starting to see a lot of errors that are occurring or high latencies with you know, with one of the threads i would know that i need to scale my application appropriately and that does conclude my demo and i hope it was able to showcase the power of tag spotlight and how it can help you quickly orient yourself in a highly complex environment I'd encourage you to start sending traces into Splunk APM today and get your hands dirty with Tag Spotlight. With that, I'll hand my control back. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Harnit, for the demo. We're about ready to wrap up this tech talk, but before we do, I just wanted to quickly share with you the resources available for you to continue your journey. You will receive these assets in a follow-up email, as well as the recording. You can take a look at our blogs. We have a lot of blogs about Splunk APM. We also have a lot of documentation around Tag Spotlight, so you can check those out. There's also more demo videos. If you want to learn about other features and learn more about Tag Spotlight, definitely check those out. But my favorite are the comp sessions. There are a lot of talks in the DevOps talk track, so you can watch all of those different sessions. And last but not least, go check out our website and learn more about what Splunk has to offer in observability. Finally, don't forget that we have an incredible community of Splunk users on our community site. You can search the answers section on Tag Spotlight. You can continue the conversation for this talk within the discussion section called Tech Talks. And finally, there is Splunk Ideas, where you can submit new product enhancements or vote for current ideas from other customers. And that's it. We really appreciate you taking the time out of your schedules to join us today. Please tune back in for future Tech Talks. We are excited to share the series with you.